Bruh, did you pour my milk? Don't, don't do that. What's that? Yo, 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 what's we good? here. What's, what's going good? on, man? You got your, your man Cat Ofori here, my man Osahan on the Sahan. side. Oh. What's going on? We here for another episode, episode on, two. Fly in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> episode two. Keep it going. You scared of flies? I'm not going to say anything, but we talking about That's a fly on the wall world. trying to get this knowledge, I'm just bro. saying, exactly. You see how you spin that off? That's how you got to keep it, keep it going. Factual. All right, so you know you can follow us. Um, I'm Mr. Knockout. Fantasy football, all platforms. Look at it below. Oh, what you got? You already know my name. Just check it down below. All right, you T- know. Today we're talking about players on a on the move. So Talk you got NFL players Is there- that have changed teams, mm-hmm. and we're going to talk about whether they're going to be viable assets or folks that you should pick up. You want to jump right into it, or? You want to give it? You want to? I mean, tease I, it a little bit. I want to tease it right now. Let them know what we're going to talk about, but we're going to get into um, just answering a few questions. Now, we, this is episode two, right. um, and we got some feedback from episode one. Uh, so, I want to some talk. milkmen, <laughs> some questions from the milkmen. <laughs> I want to talk about some stuff that we were asked, and like one of the questions was, "What makes you guys experts to speak about fantasy?" And that was pretty direct. You know, that was a direct question. And, oh, what you got for that? <laughs> Bro, I'm that guy. <laughs> Who, like, in so many words, that's the reason, man. I'm that guy. So I'll give you a little more insight. Right. We're, we're, we, we do do our research. Talk um, about it. We labeled our credentials prior to this. We yeah. let you know that we won championships in the past. We've been playing for some time. Yes. We've always been in the upper echelon of all our leagues. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're able to share our advice. We have a lot of insight. Yeah, we do. We give insight. We New watch as many game. games as possible. Of course. We offer our eye tests. Yes. Even our feelings. Like remember, fantasy is about probability and about your feeling in regards to what the player is going to be doing. And that eye test, man. You can't forget <laughs> about the eye test. The eye test tells a lot, right? So if you're watching the game and the player may not produce as many um yards or numbers that you're expecting. You can see that they have the capability of doing so, and then you're going to pick that play up, hold on to them, and hope that the coach also sees, hey, this play just broke out for a run, and they broke and they did something great. So that's why you're seeing it. So we do use our eye test, and we'll let you know when we're doing that as well, right? Mm-hmm. So that answers question number one. We got a question number two from our milkman. Where can I find the best information about fantasy football? What you got on that, O? From us. Why are you watching? <laughs> because we are going to give you – our insights you can catch it on our website, on all of our Instagram, our um, what is it called? Um, Patreon. Patreon. There you go. Especially our Patreon. Our Patreon. Our website. We have exclusive. Yep. Exclusives. Yep. On our Patreon. Our Instagram. We're gonna we're gonna hook you up. We're gonna let you know when we got things coming out. Mm-hmm. We're always gonna be give, pushing that content. So I agree. I'm with you on that one. I think that gave a little more insight into what we're gonna have to offer. Question number three from our milkman. What's one thing you guys think that makes you stand out and dominate? So listen, it's the preparation. It's again, I'm telling you, hey, we're going through this process. We're researching many. We're researching many sites. Mm-hmm. We're doing our process. We're we're talking about it before we even get on this particular podcast because we recognize that we were dominant in the leagues that we played against, right? Mm-hmm. So I think you have to kind of like make this ordeal fun for you guys utilize all your tools understand like your league understand like who's playing in your particular league 100% our league we've been playing for a while so like I think one of the things that old dominates is knowing like the managers that are there I treat fantasy like a business and you know I'm a successful businessman so (laughs) look you got it's, it's all about relationships it's all about knowing your opponent he's not humble I'm very humble. <laughs> I'm very no. It's really about knowing tendencies. It's like poker. Yep. It's like chess. You got to anticipate a lot. 
Yep. You understand? And once you understand people, you understand fantasy. Oh my God! A hundred percent. So listen, like, you know, what you do in the league and understanding the managers, I actually think of, oh, like a savant. I'll give him this compliment. You won't get that many during the, these episodes. Give me but, my flowers, man. Um, his trading ability, right? What do you think about trades, vetoes, and also being the commissioner at the same time? Okay, first of all, being a commissioner and being a savage is a very, <laughs> very tough thing to do. But I have managed it throughout the years. The problem is that a lot of people expect me to be logical, but I'm only the commissioner on draft day <laughs> and we're making payments. Outside of that, don't ask for no help. Obviously, I have to step in if something is egregious, but for the most part, everything is within the rules. Don't ask me to do anything to favor you when you play me. That's not going to happen. You understand? But we're going to keep it fair. And I'm just going to be a savage because at the end of the day, look, you have to be on top of your game as a commissioner, but you also got to be a savage, man, as a competitor. Nah, I feel you. I feel you. There's some stories that come with that. I, I do feel a certain type of way certain times when some trades go through. We have to share a lot but <laughs> that goes on. <laughs> I do feel a certain league. type of way. It's like, uh, so one of the things, like, how do you, so here's a quick story for everyone, yeah, right? Up. We going after the same player last mm-hmm. year, going after Mark Andrews, tight end, and we're both offering. Ooh, you, remember you, do you remember, I remember that? This. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're yeah. offering certain players to get that particular player, and I felt like the players that I had offered at that time Talk were about it. at a higher standard than the player that you offered to actually get them at the end of it. Okay, I have right? a question for you, man. Yeah, what's your when, question? When, when, you, when you call people or when you text people, do you say, hey, you guys, how the kids? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you ask after the well-being? The dude don't have no kids, Okay, man. so then don't ask. <laughs> what, I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that you got to kind of massage it. Uh, don't go there don't go there but you gotta honestly know who you're talking to you gotta massage approach. you and you gotta There's hold certain it right? people That's in our you... league if I call they don't pick up but I'll text them you understand there's certain people that <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna go too much into it but 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 what do you think happened tell me why you think I was able to pull off with less I don't know I think you called them you spoke to them yeah. in that smooth voice and then you got him to trade you and then he denied the trade that I, I listen for him. the last time guys <laughs> I do not whisper in men's ears maybe Bart went out to the mall uh, but I'm a whisperer Listen, listen. I, I'm still salty about that, but we we can move on about yeah, that. Last faster, question man. coming up from don't the cry milkman. over spilled milk, man. <laughs> Last question coming <laughs> up from the milkman yeah. is how will you help me hit a home run in my league? You want to speak to that a little bit? Not to sound cocky, but you just got to stay tuned, man. This is what we're doing. Yep, we're teaching and molding the future fantasy champions yep. by giving us the insight, no, giving I, them insight. Yeah, I agree. It's, that's it. Yep. I, listen, we dive into the numbers. We talked about it. We go into like our eye test. We do what we got to do on our part to offer you the best insight that we can. Mm-hmm. We're going on this and we're trying our best to like come up with as much content for you guys to research. We're going through it on the back end. We're having these conversations that you know you're having mm-hmm. so you can kind of decipher like whose milk you want to pour. So like now- Everyone going, pour your own milk. <laughs> no, no, listen. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I pour my own milk, uh-huh. but- I don't agree with how much milk you put. You know what I mean? We're going to go into that thing again. Let's go into the bench and explain what. This is only episode number two. This could be the first time somebody's it's watching. Two. So un- help help our fans understand why we named the podcast Don't Pour My Milk. Fantasy is a bowl of cereal. Yep. Right? Yep. Each player is each flake. Yep. The milk is what you put into it. Yep. How you want to build it. Yep. What you want to come off your bowl of cereal. I like a lot of milk i like it to be soggy <laughs> i like warm cereal oh, how do you God. like you want to splash in there yeah i just want a little bit of you I, like I, it I give crunchy? it some substance i do like the crunch the crunch i, I am to, not accustomed to a hard life it's it's an adventure you uh-huh. know i like an adventure during fantasy mm-hmm. i like maneuvering transactions mm-hmm. and going through like the free agency you just like to just pour it all in there the first time and just yeah, make it all soggy see, let it sit in there huh? i don't I, like my 
You you do a lot of waiver wire. I do. You get a lot of gems. Yep. I like to I like to <laughs> I like to fish. I like he looks nice on your team. <laughs> He's not but he would be better. <laughs> He's not lying. <laughs> but but why am I always able to get these trades? I don't know. That's the one part I gotta figure out. It's relationships. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, main topic, guys. We're talking about players on the move. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Only big fish. Let's only, start. Only big fish. You're right. We're Who's the big to... fish out there right now? Big fish player on the move. One, two, three. Julio Jones. Julio Jones. Yes, the big fish. How you fish. feel about that? I'm not loving it, bro. You're not loving Julio Jones over there? I've, I've always been a fan of Julio. I'm not loving this move. It's a great football move. Is gonna bite you in your as a fantasy move. But see, this is what I don't understand. Talk about it, man. Listen, see, I'm not I'm not trying to pour your milk. I said what I said. Yeah. Julio Jones ADP right now is going in the fourth round, right? They, they're wrong. <laughs> That's ADP at this current moment. <laughs> they're wrong. That's that would be wrong. Let me ask you let me fourth. ask you a quick question. Is, Talk to is me. Julio Jones better than Corey Davis? 100 percent Would you say Julio Jones? Is a tear above Corey Davis. Yes. So what if I told you Corey Davis has 65 receptions on 92 targets for 984 yards and five touchdowns last year? I will tell you, you haven't made your point yet. <laughs> so in a similar system with a higher caliber a player, mm -hmm. you're telling me a player's caliber of Julio Jones going yes. over to the same place. Mm -hmm. That Corey Davis just left, yep. and he was able to capture these numbers. That Julio won't have a step above and be a surefire wide receiver number two. See, we're talking about all of the. We're talking about this in a vacuum, and it's not in a vacuum. Julio Jones has never played outside of Atlanta before. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Julio does Jones does not know how to play football. He knows how to play football. Mm -hmm. Julio Jones, for his career, has been always a number one. He's going into a situation as, at best, the third option on his team. Third option? Third option. Let's you talk mean, about yeah, it. You, let's who's, talk who's about wide it. receiver number one on Tennessee? A.J. Brown's 1A. Julio Jones is 1B. On the on the depth chart, is it going to say 1A and 1B? That's how I wrote it. Okay. <laughs> Thank God you're not a general manager Because that would be incorrect Listen. The correct thing is he, He's coming into a situation where A.J. Brown is already an alpha And the team The team Is the throne of King Henry Listen So, so I talk. just gave you Corey Davis's numbers In that system yeah. The reason Corey Davis was able to get, capture those numbers last year mm -hmm. Was mainly because he, did, he didn't see those double teams Right A.J. Brown is, is that alpha male but he's going to be getting the double teams, if anything. And if they double Julio, A.J. Brown gets free. If they double A.J., Julio Jones gets free. Do you not think I'll give you a better the new example. offensive coordinator is going to kind of be able to read that, they, read what the I, defense I is giving them and have but let's, let's, come there? Let's look at it like this. Last year, what did Julio Jones do? And who was the man on that team last year? It's a, it's a totally different team. I'm not, I don't want to talk about he left Atlanta. Does Tennessee throw the ball more or less? Then Atlanta. They, they threw the ball less. Okay. But so he's going to go to a team where last year they threw the ball more and go to a situation where they're throwing the ball less and eat more as a second option. Listen, guys, we're not going to argue about this all day. I just think <laughs> I made my point, and we're going to move to the next guy. <laughs> next guy we got on the docket is Kenny Galladay. You are, you're a Giants fan. Kenny Galladay Big from Giants the Lions. Fan. Going to the Giants. Yes. W what's your thoughts on that? <sighs> I like it. I like it, yep. and 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 let me tell you something. I know you're gonna give me the numbers. Your numbers guy. Yeah, hey, you're a Giants guy. I so. I am a, I am. I think you just like the color. I'm of this emotional jersey. about this situation, <laughs> so I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna go too much into it. But I will say, I think that Daniel Jones is playing for his NFL career, and I think that he's gonna he's gonna give me about four. A little over 4,000 yards this year. Come on, man. Has he ever done it before? He hasn't done it before, but this is only his <laughs> third year. And I think that he's trending up. He has his better, the best weapon in Saquon. So he has a lot of check downs. And I think that a lot of teams are going to stack the box against, against Saquon. And that's going to open up deep balls for Mr. Galladay. In Kenny Galladay's best season, yes. he has 65 receptions. 92 targets. 
He had 11 touchdowns. Yeah. And he had 1,190 yards. Mm. His best season with a better quarterback in a passing offense. Mm-hmm. And you're telling me that he's going to come to the Giants. Yes. With a lesser quarterback. Allegedly. With a lesser quarterback. Allegedly. <laughs> you Do you not think... Daniel Jones is a lesser quarterback than Matthew Stafford. Listen, man. No, um, I just, as just, a Giant it's, it's, fan, it's a yes or no question. Okay, <laughs> it's just a yes or no question. Listen, you give me a lot. Listen, I just need yes or no. Just continue. I'm listening <laughs> to you. So, I just gave you his best. His best numbers right. were 65 receptions. 65 receptions were 1190 yards Decent and numbers, 11 man. touchdowns, yeah. and he only had to really play with Marvin Jones. He's coming into a system where he has, he didn't have, he, it, don't talk to me about Kerryon Johnson. Don't talk to me about DeAndre Swift. Don't talk to me about anybody else. What he's about coming the tight end? In, he's coming into an offense. He's coming, oh, Eric Ebron? Who's the tight end? TJ Hawkinson? Play he's ball. coming into an offense with Eric Ebron. Mm-hmm. He's coming into an offense with Sterling Shepard, um, Darius Slayton, mm-hmm. um, even Kyle Rudolph, and then big man Saquon Barkley. Where Who's the best to, receiver on that, in, in, out of those guys? I don't know because I didn't see Kenny Galladay play la- last year. I, this is his numbers from two years ago we're gonna, because he we're got gonna, hurt. We're gonna give and he got the, hurt the year before that. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> and I think, no, seriously. I think we're based, just going by I, like names. We, we all, listen, and what every, we want every time we talk, right, yep. we assume in health, right? Yep. The last time we saw him play healthy, he gave you almost 1,200 yards receiving. I understand that, but he I did think not he's have in a better situation now. He didn't have that much competition, but I think that he's a better situation now. He's a wide receiver one. He's a wide receiver one going in the fourth round. It tells you what people think about him. Okay. And fantasy league. He's going in the fourth round? He's going in the fourth round as of today. So if that's the case, you just said he's Julio status. Yeah, he's a wide receiver number two. But you're you're stating that he's going to rise to the cream of the crop. I'm not even I won't I won't get him. Because I don't, I, his downside is just too. He's not a, he's not somebody I would reach for. Yeah, I, I but wouldn't I reach for him at all. He's not somebody I would reach for. But he fell to me. If in he the fell later to you in round five, would you pick him? Would you pick him up before Deontay Johnson, Tyler Lockett? No, I would. Woo! That was a quick Look, response, boy. I like Lockett though. You like Lockett? I you think like- Lockett is gonna be. A, I think Lockett is gonna have a great year. A great year. Great. So we can get on. But this is a let's, totally, let's talk about yeah, that. totally different topic. But you know why though, right? <laughs> I don't know why, okay. but I think this is going to be... Because <laughs> you're pouring my milk, man. Stop pouring I, I, I poured the milk. All right, I, poured so, the milk. I think the milk should be a little splashy. Your cereal should be crunchy, and okay. you should be doing transactions throughout the year. I'm not feeling Kenny Galladay. You are. You gave your points. I gave my points. I disagree, respectfully. Next guy on the docket. Mike t- Davis. Tell me a little bit about what you think about Mike Davis. I think Mike Davis is, is set up to have a great year. You think so, huh? Yes, I do. I just don't know why I'm not agreeing with you on anything. What? <laughs> the, 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 the thing I is... Just, I'm going to pour thing, your milk real hard on this one. All right, so here's the thing. This yep. is what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Last year as a starter, mm-hmm. limited opportunity. How did that man do? Well, I don't think he had limited opportunity. I think he actually like stepped into a role because Christian McCaffrey got hurt. Okay. So talk to me. He had... 642 yards rushing, mm-hmm. 373 reception yards, okay. over 1,000 yards from scrimmage. Okay. Good numbers? They, they sound okay. Good numbers, but I'm giving gonna... he didn't start all of the games? I got you. you he, I think he played about 14, 13 games to get those numbers, so that, I, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Mm-hmm. You got any more points you want to throw my way so I can just... I'm just giving you the facts I can give the people the real of stuff what he did last year. What's what going on? In a limited capacity. Okay, so it's my turn, right? So let's talk about Mr. Mike Davis. Talk so he was in an offense already predicated to go by the running back, mm-hmm. right? He's not... He wasn't... He was playing with Teddy Bridgewater. Mm-hmm. Now, Teddy Bridgewater compared to Matt Ryan, who would you rather have? As a did Carolina, quarterback? Did Carolina... As a quarterback, yeah, as a quarterback. Matt Ryan. Okay. All right, so you rather have Matt Ryan because he can throw the ball, right? Because he can throw the ball, yes. Okay, so you think in a Matt Ryan-led offense, mm-hmm. they're going to predicate their whole offense towards Mike Davis like they did. Remember, Carolina's offense was predicated for Christian McCaffrey, mm-hmm. so he stepped into the Christian McCaffrey role. He did okay, but he did not do what Christian McCaffrey could do with those numbers of snaps. Right? I love it when you make my point. See, this is the thing. 
You're saying that a, a good running back is going to go to a team that passes the ball, right? And he came from a team that was running the ball and passed the ball heavy to the running back. Yep. And he gave us good numbers. And the he gave team's okay numbers. He, de- decent numbers. Decent. Limited capacity. Didn't play all of the games. Does he give you numbers compared to Christian McCaffrey? No. Would but, he give you numbers but, compared? So but he why gave, would he, he gave comparable numbers? He, no, he did not give comparable numbers. He gave okay numbers. Comparable he, means that they can compare to each other, mm-hmm. and he does not compare to Christian. Thank McCaffrey you for the though. English lesson. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm just letting you I'm know. I'm just saying. I know what comparable means. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what I'm saying is right. They knew what the Carolina could do. Okay. And the guy gave you decent numbers. All right. We know what Matt Ryan can do in yep. the air. I do. They're not stacking the box. Yep. They're not fearing Mike Davis. That man is supposed to have a great year. Okay. And so, he's in a new offense. I, I think I think he's gonna have a great year. So let me tell you a little bit Kobe. about what Todd Gurley did in Atlanta's offense last year, there right? You know, Todd Gurley. Todd Lager. Gurley, larger name. He didn't, he, he played throughout the mo- most of the year. Mm-hmm. He had the same amount of games that Mike Davis had. Right. Had six hundred and seventy eight yards, nine touchdowns, twenty five receptions. Um, total scrimmage yards was eight hundred and forty two. A whole two hundred less. Go ahead. I'm so listening. What I'm telling you mm-hmm. is, do you think Mike Davis is better than Todd Gurley? No. But oh. I think, I, but this is the oh. thing in the NFL. Oh. In the NFL, Todd Gurley coming from his situation, they stacked the box a little bit on him. Come on, man! You telling me they stacked the box? On they Todd respected. Gurley they respected. When they had Matt Ryan, they respected Julio Jones, the run. Calvin Ridley, and Russell Gage playing, I think, and they stacked the box against. They said, "Oh, I got no, Julio. no, no, no!" I didn't I say. Got, Calvin, I didn't say they stacked the box I'm all the time. I did not Todd say they stacked the box, but they did stack the box when they felt they had to run. And you got to understand, that team last year was playing from. So I'm going to pour your milk on that one, man. You could get. You the, know they were playing. You know. You know the the team last year was. Yeah, the team was team was suspect. It was trash. I, it was trash. Right I don't yeah, want to say it. Suspect. It's all right it was now. trash, you can tell bro. They, they, they was trash. I got you. So do you but know the position they were playing? I'm trying from. to give fantasy help. And I'm trying for me. The I think players now they know who their number one is in Ridley. So they yeah. know what it is. They got. They still got to go. They're still going to put some um, emphasis on their air attack, and we'll talk about it later on. Because and you I know think the new offense, Cal Pitts is going to get busy. You how know, do you feel about the new offensive coordinator that yes. went, came up from Tennessee? I think. I think he's going to bring it like a balanced game to their attack. I have a question: the offensive coordinator that came from Tennessee, what was he known from doing? What was? What did he do <laughs> last year? Is Mike Davis Derrick Henry? I didn't say he was, but I just asked the question, guy. I know, and I, I asked the did question. Did he or question. did he not run the out of the ball? But there's a he reason. He took the air out of the ball last There's a year. reason that you do run the ball because you have that player called Derrick Henry who is a man child. Who he just, might not be Derrick Henry, but he might eat in that type of offense. Yeah, yeah. That's I all think I'm going to say. For where he's going now, he's averaging usually in the fifth round as a draft pick. I think that's where you should take him. If you do need them, especially like if you're going like wide receiver heavy in the earlier rounds, okay. and you need some, you need a back that just needs to fill the role. But I do not think that you should look at him as like um, one that's going to change your life. Right? I didn't say he's going to change your life, but he's definitely, definitely going to be a value pick this year. Okay, only uh, he's only going up. I agree. If you get him at that value, if you reach for him, then good luck to you. Okay. All right. So last player that we got, talk about it. My guy. Matthew Stafford. Yes, what do you sir. think? <laughs> it seems like I like everybody here today. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, I forgot Julio wasn't that guy. No, you didn't, um, you didn't like Julio. I liked Julio. Okay. I like Stafford, man. Stafford. Ah. I like Stafford. Okay. I he has weapons. Yeah, yeah. He has a dedicated head coach. No, nah, I agree. That is the the trickery. The, he's offensive minded, and he loves. He's talking about Stafford like he's his little brother, man. Yeah, no. I think they got a little bromance going on yeah, right now. I think so too. I think this is going to be the one that we agree on. That this is going to be actually a value pick. Wait, you I, agree I, with me? We pour that milk the same way. We pour that milk the same way. So we're going to go heavy on the milk. We're going to go heavy on the milk on this one. Oh! 
oh, we going heavy on the milk. We going heavy on the milk. Let it drip. Let it drip. Let it drip. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So you agree with me? Yeah, we gonna let the milk drip. There we go. Milk drip. So why do you like Stafford? I know why I like him. So, so no. listen, his numbers, right? Mm-hmm. So I looked at Jared Goff's numbers, and I wanted to see like how he played in the full season mm-hmm. um, in a Sean McVay offense. Mm-hmm. His best seasons, Jared Goff threw for over 4,600 yards for two years, 2018 and 2019. That was right? the sound of a bomb. 2018, he threw for 32 touchdowns, right? That was his best that was his best season. Yeah. 4,600 4, yards throwing the ball, 32 touchdowns, 2019. Kind of went down, 20, 22 20, touchdowns yeah. wasn't as great. But you could, you could see that if you're competent in his system and you're utilizing your weapons that you have at hand, whether it be the running back that you're throwing the ball to, or whether it be Tyler Higby, whether it be Cooper Cup or Robert Woods, I think Matthew Stafford is definitely an upper echelon quarterback that can kind of like maneuver his first reads to his second reads and make the right read to the quarterback. He has the arm talent to do so. So I'm actually really excited to see him go from the Detroit Lions over to the LA Rams. I love I love seeing veteran quarterbacks go to places where they feel like they have to prove themselves again. Yeah. Yeah. Um I think this is the best situation for Stafford. Um um he actually made it out of Detroit alive. Yep. You know, RIP, you know, <laughs> Barry Sanders oh, and Calvary. Megatron. Oh my gosh. Detroit is a is a curricula. He yeah, got out alive. You're right. So you know you're right. Peace sorry. To you. sorry our Detroit fans, but <laughs> like what it's are you a graveyard, doing? bro. You, like, shout out to De- shout out to, to Campbell, the coach. But come on, man! Like, y'all had Jim Caldwell, and y'all let him go. The greatest <laughs> we, 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 back of all time yo. said no mas. <laughs> One of the Meg- greatest wide receivers said, "I gotta retire." They like, named him after a transformer. Well, yeah, my and God. he had mechanical issues. How you do that? <laughs> but you know what? Like uh, we're not gonna get into that. This props episode. to Stafford. You know we, what I'm saying? We, for getting out alive. Yep. yep. We pouring our milk for, for Stafford. We agree on one person. Yep. Listen, that's the end of today's show. Yes, sir. Hey, we doing it like we doing it for TV. Thank you so much for watching the show. Continue to click that like button. Subscribe. Subscribe. Look subscribe. A, look us on every kind of social media platform. We really enjoy doing this. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to us. But we, we out of here. Like and subscribe. Comment if you like. Yep. If you don't like. This is a, this If is a you agree show. with me. Yep. Or you disagree with him? Yeah, let us um, know. Yeah, comment below <laughs> and let us know. Like he didn't peep it was the same thing. Th- yeah. no, no. Comment <laughs> below and let us know. Yeah, let us know like who you agree with because I think uh, Old Smoke's a little sour today. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It's a little churned. I don't know what he's doing with the. <laughs> this guy is, is one percent over here talking about me. <laughs> Listen, guys, Yo. we appreciate you. Continue to support. Continue to support. Yeah, like and subscribe. All Follow right. us everywhere. Peace. Later.